Let's move on to the Wednesday wrangle now. I'm joined at the desk by Liz Storer. A third of the late debate, just a third, unless you go out outside your quota some nights. <laughs> and joining us from Melbourne, as ever, is broadcaster and author Justin Smith. I want to stick on, on this issue, at least broader Indigenous issues, because uh, we've heard from Lydia Thorpe yet again, and when you see about those real problems and real kids and teenagers facing incredible trauma, whether home's safe and all the rest of it, what their future is going to be if they can't get to school... But Lydia Thorpe has told us all that she's facing a lot of racial discrimination in Parliament. Have a look. It's every day where there's little niggly comments, racist little remarks, and you've got to just suck it up. That's my dilemma. Do I just let it go, let the racism go and pretend everything is OK in, the, in my workplace and get on with business? <laughs> There she is, the independent Senator Lydia Thorpe. Now, Liz, you know your way around Parliament House. Do you reckon she's encountering a lot of racist remarks and the like around no, Parliament House? No, not Canberra? at all. And we saw this play out a matter of weeks ago when she was in the chamber with Holly Hughes, who said under her breath, because it was late at night, it was past 10pm in the Senate, and Lydia gets up to speak, opens with welcome to country, and Holly Hughes was heard under her breath saying, how many times a day do we have to hear this? And got lambasted by Lydia, is this racism? This is racism, Mr Speaker, etc. and so on. Patently not racism at all. So if that's your definition of racism, any kind of someone didn't smile at me today, Lydia is going to say that's racist. It's racism. patently untrue. It's patent nonsense. Racism, of course, is a serious issue and we've all got to stand up against it. But I think she's devaluing the currency a little bit with some of these claims, Justin. Mm -hmm. I remember not so long ago, a year or two ago, she claimed when she was stopped from getting on a Qantas jet, I think it might have been Virgin, stopped from getting on a jet in Canberra because her hand luggage was oversized. She claimed that was a racist <laughs> intervention. I Look, I've got to say, I... I don't believe her, uh, you know, and because if there are racist comments, I mean, let's hear them. If somebody was saying something to her, even if it was tiny, if they were making comments about her, the colour of her skin or her heritage, and it was real racism, let's hear them because we've got to get rid of it. And, and I'm just wondering, you know, she doesn't have a problem saying anything else, why can't you actually say yeah. what the comments are and who's actually saying them. I've got to say, the, the fact that she gets rat-faced outside of a strip place is actually the only interesting thing about her at the moment. I think the rest of it is becoming really boring and, unfortunately, it's moving away from an important debate that we're supposed to be having. And for many people that are watching uh, television or reading the papers, she's actually making herself the face of this whole debate. And it's too bloody important for that, as we know. It's too important for her, to have her as the face of it. I, I really wish you'd get out of the way. I think uh, we've seen enough of uh, Lydia Thorpe to know that if someone did say something offensive or racist to her, she would hit back. She'd and have be the, the first to be, name and shame. And name and oh. shame, yeah, as she should. But yeah. uh, um, This is a hearsay. You, you mentioned she's the face of this debate. The debate, of course, is the voice debate. Don't forget, she's against the voice. She's the radical activist who doesn't want the voice. She's on the no side. And you see a lot of the no arguments on this station. I think the rest of the country doesn't see a lot of yes or no arguments. It's just a political argy-bargy. And I don't think she's... The face of much anything at all. She's no. a detractor. She's a bit of an outlier. She makes everything yeah. about herself as yeah. opposed to, like you just said, the real issues that we were discussing previously. They don't get a mention. It's well, all I'm just about saying, Lydia. I know that some of the no campaigners are trying to use her to sort of howl down the voice. She hates the voice. She's against the voice. So park her in the no camp, I'm, all right? I'm not, I'm just... not saying that she's a credible face of it. No. So <laughs> what I'm I want to do is uh, the credible face no. of it. Now, what I was just going to say is we're going to start to see the campaign rolling out now a little bit more. There hasn't really been a yes campaign, and not and the no campaign's only just started with that ad uh, with Jacinta Price and uh, and Colin uh, Little uh, recently. Well, here's the yes ad. They've uh, rolled out their first ad of the campaign. Australia's constitution is 122 years old and still doesn't recognise Indigenous Australians. We've been here for 65,000 years. This year, Australians have a chance to fix that with a referendum to give Indigenous Australians a real say in their future. Fair enough. I'll second that. To find out more, visit yes23.com.au. Join us. 
Interesting ad, Liz, because we're expecting people to tug at our heartstrings and this is more of a, ah, oh, it's a matter of fact, just make it happen. Yeah, just do it. Yeah. I was surprised by the, the lack of guilt in this ad also, but the two points that it does make are patently untrue. The Constitution's 122 years old and Indigenous Australians are still not recognised. No, That's they've true. been recognised all along because the writers 122 years ago considered Indigenous Australians as Australian as the rest of us. So well, when no, it they were excluded, to Australian, they were excluded under, it refers... under provisions. They were excluded under certain provisions of the Constitution. And those provisions what? are no longer excluding them one, whatsoever. One, one, one is gone. Yeah, they're not excluded, and therefore they are included. Any mention of Australians includes them, period. All right, you say they're included under Australian. There's no specific uh, recognition of the first people, Indigenous Australians. As I say, they'd only be mentioned by exclusion in the Constitution. I just, until I, I think it is patently dishonest to make census. out that this is only about constitutional recognition. Well, no, it says we that know. that's it. We know it's about the voice as well. And, 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 and they don't mention the voice, but say giving them a real say in their In affairs. their future, because yeah. 12 Indigenous yeah. members of federal parliament isn't giving them... I mean, that's actually a massive over-representation yeah, well, of less is, than 3% of the now population. Now you're getting into that racist argument that we judge our MPs by where they come from, ethnic, eth, their ethnic background. How many Greek MPs are there? How isn't, many Iranians? Isn't that the entire argument of the voice, that we no. need Indigenous Australians to speak to issues that... To their issues, yeah. Them. To their yeah. issues, and yeah. And they've got 13, sorry, 12 members of no, federal no, parliament we're going to get sidetracked. I want to give Justin that. A no, great they're, deal. No, they're they're representing the thought. Greens, the Liberals, the Labor. They're representing states and electorates. They speak they're not for Indigenous not representing Australians indi indigenous on a very people. regular basis. They're Look not representing Indigenous Indigenous Look at people any more than I'm representing Irish Catholics. No, they absolutely <laughs> constantly speak for their people. We'll, we'll carry on the wrangle. We're going to come back after the break. But just before we go, Justin, quickly, your thoughts on that ad? I don't like it. I, it's it's really dumbed down, isn't it? I think it's an important debate and I need to look at the finer detail. I, I'm obviously leaning towards the yes vote, but that thing, I don't think it needs to be too simple. I think people are smart enough, and this is a really important issue. I think we can get things that are complex. That, to me, is a little bit, uh, dare it's I say, dishonestly a bit simple. It's a bit dumbed down. Dumbed down?